I know it's been a while since I did a woodworking project on my channel, but today I'm going to show you how I made this bedside table for my daughter to take to grad school in Texas. Coming up. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the cloud, and this bedside table was an idea that my daughter had gotten from Etsy. They were making it out of reclaimed wood, and it cost almost $200. Now, I didn't make mine out of reclaimed wood. I just made it out of stock pine, but that's because I wanted to minimize the number of tools that were used. I didn't want you guys to feel like you had to have a lot of tools to do a simple woodworking project. And the legs are hairpin legs off of Amazon. They cost me about $24. And I paid about $20 for the wood itself. And I already had the finish for it. So everything was really pretty inexpensive. Now you know I've got a shop full of big machinery for woodworking, like the table saw and the band saw and the drill press. But I really wanted to make this project as simple as possible so that those of you at home feel like you could do it yourself. This is not very difficult. Let me show you what I used. Okay, for starters, I'm gonna use a power saw. This is a circular saw, seven and a quarter inch. I am going to use a cordless drill and with a driver bit and also some drill bits. You're gonna see me use a sander. This is a an oscillating random orbit sander so that there's no sanding marks in it and you're going to see me also use a Craig jig for the joinery. All right, it's beginning to take shape. This is the, the general idea that we're working with here. It is going to be, I, I use three, let's see, three pieces. This is five quarter inch pine, five quarter by six. So they actually wind up being five and a half inches each times three is 16 and a half inches deep. That way we didn't have to rip it at all. The length is going to be 18 inches, and of course, the height is determined by this is a full piece here, five and a half inches. Now, standard pine is three quarters of an inch thick, but we went with five quarter because it is about three eighths of an inch thicker, so it's about 50% thicker. Now, it's not for strength, it's just for aesthetics because this gives a, a chunkier look to it. So far, all I've done is create the top and the bottom and cut these pieces to size. But before I go any further, let me explain how this was done. I took eight foot boards, cut them into 20 inch pieces. finish length is going to be 18 inches, but um, I left them long purposely so I can cut them nice and flush afterwards. Anyway, this is done with my Craig jig. I used um, that with inch and a half screws here to, with a little bit of glue, just a little bit of glue to, uh, to hold the boards together. And that creates a nice strong top. And those are not going to be visible. This is on the inside of the top and on the underside of the bottom. So I don't worry about seeing any of those. And I also position them so that if you do look inside, I'm not gonna make a drawer on it, but if you do look inside, you won't see the holes if you see. If you look like this, you'd see the holes much worse than this. So it's not that big of a deal, but a little detail just to, to keep in mind. So working with the Craig jig is really easy. The first thing you need to do is know the thickness of your boards. And these are five quarter, which works out to be an inch and an eighth. Then what I need to do is come over here and set this collet, this lock collar, so that the bottom of the drill bit matches that, that thickness, which is an inch and an eighth. The other thing I have to do is on this side, there's a depth gauge too. You loosen this screw and you raise and lower, so that's at an inch and an eighth as well. And so that's all I need to worry about. And now I can drill my holes and then screw them together. The 
pocket holes are stopped before the edge and the screw will go through the rest of the way. I'm going to put three holes in each of these boards. length and start the assembly. To cut the ends straight on the top and the bottom, I'm using this clamp here. This is a, a straight edge and this distance from the edge of my saw to the blade is five inches. So I've held this back about six inches so I can cut an inch, roughly an inch off of the edge and get a nice smooth cut. What I just did is I used a countersink drill bit to drill a hole, this is a scrap piece of wood, that uh, the hole goes down so that when the screw is in there, the head will be hidden. And then I use a little plug that fills that hole right there. I'll glue the plug in, sand it smooth. You will still be able to see it, but that's okay, that's the way it was, the same style that was in the Etsy design. put it together temporarily I'm gonna have to take it apart to uh, sand the insides but this way I can get all the holes exactly where I need them to be and uh, then I'll reassemble it I'm following the same process on the bottom but I'm not actually gonna fill the holes with the, uh, the plugs you're never gonna see them anyway now to take it apart What I'm doing now is I'm cutting a groove in the side pieces that is going to hold a back. I have a thin piece of plywood here and I'm just running my saw through at about 3 eighths of an inch deep, a couple of passes to make it wide enough to hold just on the sides. It'll hold this piece of plywood on both sides.
after putting two coats of clear polyurethane on the inside surfaces with a light sanding in between, this is a 320 grit sanding block, I am ready to reassemble. And then I can sand the outside and put the finish on the outside as well. And the, in, the back is just held into a groove on both sides. It's held loose. It's not that strong. Like, it's not meant to be holding weight. It's just to prevent things from falling off the back. That's all. thing is reassembled and I glued the plugs in on the top of each one of the screws. Now this is not glued and the reason why I didn't glue that, let me explain. These boards are glued because the, the grain goes all in the same direction so that's okay. But here you've got grain going in this direction on the side and this direction on the top. If I glued that there's a good chance that the top will shrink with the humidity and it could cause it to crack. So without gluing it Hopefully the screws will provide enough give and uh, it really doesn't need to be glued. It is not structural. So now I'm going to sand off these plugs. Alright, I've used this self-centering drill bit to drill pilot holes here. And next, I'm going to install four, these are uh, one inch by number eight screws. They don't go through, so that's good. And they also are not, they're only one inch long, and this is an inch and an eighth, so it will not protrude the inside. And these are just being put in just temporarily, then I'm going to take them out so we can ship it without taking as much space. There we go. Now the only thing left to do is to paint them copper colored. That's what the original design had and that's what we wanted. These were actually really inexpensive. I got them on Amazon for like $24 for the set, but they only came in black. So another few bucks for a can of spray paint and we'll be good to go. And I just have to finish the outside. All right, the legs received two coats of paint. And I must say this Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Copper did a great job with it. They look really great. Better than the black. Now I just gotta put them on. And to put them on, I'm using the same screwdriver that I'm going to have with me in Texas. I'm not gonna have my power tools there. Alright, if you like this project, give the video a thumbs up. And if you'd like, you can leave a comment to wish my daughter Becca good luck at Baylor University. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.